step behind the curtain for an exclusive look into the hidden dynamics of one of America's most legendary Western TV shows, Gunsmoke. While the show portrayed strong bonds on screen, the reality off camera wasn't always so smooth. In this insightful video, we'll dive into why one of James Arnes's co-stars struggled to work with him and reveal the actor Arnes truly couldn't stand. Intrigued? Stick with us as we expose the backstage tensions that added unexpected drama to this iconic series. If you're a die-hard Gunsmoke fan, trust us, you won't want to miss this. Widely regarded as one of the finest TV series in history, Gunsmoke earned its place in television legend through its unmatched success and loyal viewership. For 20 straight years, audiences eagerly tuned in every week to follow Marshall Matt Dillon's adventures, cementing the show as a timeless masterpiece in the Western drama genre. From its premiere in 1955 to its farewell in 1975, Gunsmoke became appointment viewing, even as the Western genre's popularity waned. Fans remained hooked, proving it to be the defining Western series of its era. Gunsmoke firmly established itself as one of the most iconic shows to grace the television screens from the 1950s through the 1970s. Its ability to capture audiences with compelling narratives and standout performances was just the beginning. The show's remarkable adaptability was a key reason for its enduring success, showcasing a willingness to evolve with the times. Originally debuting as a radio drama, Gunsmoke made a smooth and strategic transition to television as a half-hour black-and-white series. This move was a testament to the producer's vision and readiness to embrace new opportunities in the growing world of TV. As television technology advanced, so did Gunsmoke. The series boldly transitioned into an hour-long format and embraced color, positioning itself ahead of the curve at a time when many shows were slow to adapt. One standout moment in the show's evolution came in its 16th season, when viewers were finally introduced to Doc's full name, Galen Adams. This revelation deepened the audience's connection to the character. Milburn Stone, who portrayed Doc, was given the unique honor of choosing the name, a personal touch that reflected his deep understanding of the role. The decision to bring Gunsmoke from radio to television was a masterstroke, propelling the show to unprecedented success. Interestingly, even as the television version thrived, the original radio series continued for six more years, from 1952 to 1961. The fact that both formats flourished simultaneously is a testament to the show's timeless appeal and its well-crafted characters, resonating with audiences in multiple mediums for nearly two decades. Gunsmoke's journey to television came with several fascinating casting decisions and sponsorship dynamics. Originally, producers had their sights set on John Wayne for the role of Matt Dillon, creating an interesting what-if moment in the show's history. However, due to his packed film schedule, Wayne had to decline the offer. Despite not taking the role, Wayne was a vocal supporter of Gunsmoke and even helped promote the show before its first episode aired, showcasing his confidence in its success. As Gunsmoke rose to the top of the television ratings, its sponsorships reflected the changing cultural trends of the era. For the first seven seasons, LM Cigarettes were a major sponsor, illustrating the strong commercial ties that helped shape television programming at the time. The transition from radio to television also brought significant changes to the portrayal of Matt Dillon. William Conrad voiced Dillon in the radio version, but producers felt that James Arness, with his tall and rugged looks, was better suited for the television adaptation. This switch proved pivotal in defining Gunsmoke's visual identity. Gary Busey's involvement in Gunsmoke was also noteworthy. He played Harve Daly in a key episode that marked the last time a character died on the series. This moment occurred in the third to last episode of Gunsmoke, adding a sense of finality to the show's concluding chapter. Another interesting shift came with the character of Miss Kitty Russell. In the radio version of Gunsmoke, Miss Kitty played a prominent role, but her television counterpart was downplayed. Network executives made a conscious decision to tone down her character, particularly her implied profession, in order to keep the show more aligned with family-friendly content. The changing political and social climate of the 1970s also left its mark on Gunsmoke. In its early years, each episode opened with a gunfight between Matt Dillon and an outlaw. However, as public sentiment began to shift against the portrayal of violence on television, the show's creators had to rethink these scenes. To adapt to the times, they restructured the openings to be less focused on violence, reflecting the growing societal concerns. In an unexpected twist, 
Gilligan's Island played a pivotal role in saving Gunsmoke from cancellation. In 1967, CBS initially planned to remove Gunsmoke from its lineup. However, after a massive outcry from fans and Western enthusiasts, CBS reversed the decision. Instead of canceling Gunsmoke, the network opted to put Gilligan's Island on hold, allowing Gunsmoke to continue its legendary run. Gunsmoke's television legacy is firmly cemented in history, having set an impressive record that held strong for decades. On April 29, 2018, The Simpsons surpassed Gunsmoke's primetime record for the most episodes ever with its 636th episode during its 28th season. However, despite Gunsmoke concluding after 20 seasons, it had amassed a total of 635 episodes, an extraordinary achievement considering its shorter run. This prolific output made Gunsmoke a benchmark for content creation, with each season delivering a high volume of episodes that few contemporary shows could match until The Simpsons claimed the record. The comparison between these two iconic shows highlights how television production has evolved, with Gunsmoke setting a standard for both longevity and episode count long before The Simpsons rose to prominence. Beyond its vast number of episodes, Gunsmoke left an indelible mark on television as a symbol of the industry's capacity to keep audiences engaged over an extended period while maintaining quality storytelling. However, the end of Gunsmoke's run in 1975 was unexpected and unceremonious. Unlike modern series, which often plan elaborate finales to provide closure, Gunsmoke ended its final season without any awareness that it was the last. The show's creators and cast had no opportunity to craft a farewell episode, leaving fans without the closure typically associated with long-running series finales. This abrupt ending added a unique and somewhat unfinished chapter to Gunsmoke's otherwise monumental journey. One of the more fascinating behind-the-scenes dynamics involved the evolving relationship between Milburn Stone Doc and James Arnest Matt Dillon. In a candid TV Guide interview, Stone opened up about his initial animosity toward Arnest, describing how his dislike for his co-star built up over the first three years of working together. Stone's frustration stemmed from what he perceived as Arnest's lack of professionalism, frequent lateness, and an apparent disregard for the disruptions caused. Stone admitted to feeling completely at odds with Arnis and even questioned his place in the entertainment industry. The tension eventually boiled over, leading to a direct confrontation between the two actors. Surprisingly, this conflict proved to be a turning point in their relationship. After airing their grievances, they were able to resolve their differences, allowing their on-screen chemistry to flourish and paving the way for a more collaborative working relationship as the show progressed. This journey from discord to camaraderie is just one example of how Gunsmoke wasn't merely about the stories it told on screen, but also about the complex relationships and transformations behind the scenes. In a revealing interview, Milburn Stone shared even more about his intense confrontation with James Arnes on the set of Gunsmoke, offering insight into a pivotal moment that reshaped their relationship. Stone recalled the day he directly confronted Arnes expressing his frustration over what he perceived as Arnis's unprofessional behavior. I've read my contract, Stone stated bluntly, and there's nothing in it that says I have to put diapers on you or wait for you. And if you ever show up late again, buddy, you'll have two things to explain not only where you were, but where I went. The directness of this statement reflected Stone's no-nonsense attitude and refusal to tolerate any further disruptions. Surprisingly, instead of escalating the situation, Arnis responded in an unexpected way. Stone admitted that, in hindsight, he wouldn't have been shocked if Arnis had retaliated physically. However, instead of lashing out, Arnis simply looked Stone in the eye and replied, You're absolutely right. This admission of fault caught Stone off guard and marked a turning point in their relationship. From that moment on, the hostility between the two actors began to fade, giving way to mutual respect and even fondness. Stone later described Arnis as a great big wonderful cub bear, a stark contrast to his earlier frustrations. This unexpected shift not only diffused the tension on set, but also fostered a more harmonious and collaborative atmosphere between the two leading actors. Milburn Stone's role on Gunsmoke went far beyond his portrayal of Doc Adams. He left a lasting impact on the series, shaping much of its heart and soul. Stone was fiercely dedicated to maintaining the integrity of the show's core characters and was unafraid to challenge producers or cast members if he felt the essence of Gunsmoke was being compromised. 
His determination to uphold the show's narrative centered on the relationships between its primary characters ensured that Gunsmoke remained true to its roots, even if it sometimes created friction behind the scenes. One of the most defining moments for Stone came when he received a fan letter that profoundly influenced how he approached his portrayal of Doc Adams. The letter urged him to further develop and deepen his character, which led him to enhance his portrayal and ultimately endeared him even more to viewers. This connection with fans not only motivated Stone but also demonstrated the power of audience engagement in shaping television characters. Stone's commitment to his role and to his audience was evident in both his on-screen presence and his insistence on professionalism behind the scenes. In many ways, Milburn Stone embodied the spirit of dedication both to his craft and to the fans who made Gunsmoke an enduring American classic. His contributions to the show, both in front of the camera and off screen, were essential to its success. So next time you watch Gunsmoke, take a moment to appreciate not just the action and drama, but the passion and dedication that actors like Milburn Stone poured into making it a beloved and timeless piece of television history. Despite their contrasting styles, Stone and Arnis's differences became a core strength of Gunsmoke. Stone's unwavering professionalism often clashed with Arnis's more laid-back demeanor, yet the balance they struck between seriousness and light-heartedness added depth to the show. Arnis's humor played off Stone's gravitas, creating a unique dynamic that contributed to the show's long-lasting appeal. Instead of hindering the series, these differences enhanced Gunsmoke, helping it stand out as a benchmark for quality television throughout its 20-year run. The remarkable dedication of James Arnis and Milburn Stone to Gunsmoke is evident in their impressive attendance throughout the show's extensive run. James Arnis, who portrayed the iconic Marshal Matt Dillon, achieved the remarkable feat of appearing in nearly every episode, underscoring his unwavering commitment to the role in the series. Milburn Stone, who played Doc Adams, followed closely behind, missing only a mere six episodes. His brief absence, caused by a heart attack, highlighted not only the physical toll of his dedication but also his determination to return to the screen and continue portraying his beloved character. Milburn Stone's resilience in overcoming health challenges to continue his role is a testament to the indomitable spirit that characterized the Gunsmoke cast. His return after his health setback resonated deeply with audiences, emphasizing the perseverance required to bring cherished characters to life. James Arnis faced his own significant health challenge, battling a severe case of arthritis that impacted the filming schedule of Gunsmoke. The effects of arthritis on Arnis were so pronounced that, during the show's last decade, a unique filming approach was adopted to accommodate his condition. To manage the physical strain, all of Arnis's scenes were consolidated and shot within a single day. This adjustment allowed him a full week of rest before the next round of filming, ensuring he could deliver his performances while effectively managing his health needs. Glenn Strange, a beloved actor whose career spanned several decades, also made significant contributions to Hollywood and Gunsmoke. Known for his versatility, Strange's Hollywood career flourished during the 1940s, including his notable role as Frankenstein in several films, stepping into the shoes of the iconic Boris Karloff. However, it was in the 1960s that Glenn Strange became a familiar face to television audiences through his role in Gunsmoke. His portrayal added depth and charisma to the series, contributing to its success during its run. Tragically, Glenn Strange's time on Gunsmoke was cut short by his passing in 1973, marking the end of an era for both the actor and the show. Strange's legacy extends beyond Gunsmoke, encompassing a diverse and accomplished career in Hollywood. His portrayal of Frankenstein and his contributions to the Western genre showcased the breadth of his acting prowess, leaving an indelible mark on both horror films and television history. The dedication of Arnis Stone and Strange to their craft not only shaped Gunsmoke but also set a standard for commitment in the television industry. Their ability to overcome personal challenges while maintaining high-quality performances is a testament to their professionalism and love for the art of storytelling. As Gunsmoke remains a beloved classic, the enduring legacies of its cast continue to inspire future generations of actors and fans alike. Amanda Blake's portrayal of Miss Kitty Russell in Gunsmoke became iconic, yet interestingly, she wasn't the original choice for the role. Initially, the producers had their sights set on actress Polly Bond to bring Kathleen Kitty Russell to life on screen. Bond, who came from a family with a show business background, 
and had over a decade of experience performing in westerns, seemed like the ideal candidate. However, in a surprising turn of events, Bond chose to decline the role, which left the producers scrambling for a new lead. Enter Amanda Blake, whose undeniable talent and captivating presence would ultimately change the course of television history. Blake stepped into the role of Miss Kitty Russell, and her performance became synonymous with the character, significantly contributing to the show's success. Her portrayal added depth and charisma to Gunsmoke, making it nearly impossible to envision anyone else in the iconic role. The conclusion of Gunsmoke marked the end of an era, but surprisingly, the cast learned about the show's cancellation through trade publications rather than from the producers themselves. This lack of direct communication left the actors feeling blindsided and disappointed. James Arnes, who portrayed the legendary Matt Dillon, revealed that the cast had no prior knowledge of the impending cancellation. The producers had seemingly neglected to inform them directly, leading to a sense of shock and uncertainty among the actors who had invested years of their lives into the series. The news of the cancellation was especially jarring, considering Gunsmoke as significant impact on television history. The casting process for the pivotal role of Matt Dillon saw several notable actors vying for the opportunity. Among those who auditioned were Raymond Burr and Denver Pyle, both of whom were talented in their own right. However, the producers ultimately felt that neither Burr nor Pyle was the perfect fit for the role. In this competitive landscape, James Arnest stood out with his impressive audition, securing the breakthrough role of Matt Dillon. His portrayal of the complex and honorable lawman not only contributed to Gunsmoke as success, but also solidified his place as an integral part of television history. Gunsmoke enjoyed remarkable success during the late 50s and early 60s, solidifying its position as the number one show on television for four consecutive years, from 1957 to 1961. During this time, viewers tuned in faithfully, and the series became a cultural phenomenon. However, in a surprising turn of events in 1961, the producers made a bold move by transitioning from a half-hour program to a full-hour format, redefining the show's narrative scope and pacing while allowing for deeper storytelling and character development. This transition marked a pivotal moment in the series' history, demonstrating the producers' willingness to innovate and adapt to changing viewer preferences. The expanded format allowed Gunsmoke to explore more complex storylines and character arcs, further enriching the audience's experience and contributing to the show's enduring legacy. As Gunsmoke evolved, so too did the depth of its characters and the narratives woven into its rich tapestry, cementing its status as one of television's most beloved westerns. The shift from a half-hour to a full-hour format initially led to a decline in Gunsmoke's popularity, challenging the established norms of television programming at the time. This creative decision, however, ultimately proved pivotal in shaping the show's trajectory. Contrary to expectations, the format change did not signal the end of Gunsmoke. Instead, the series experienced a resurgence during the late 60s and early 70s, recapturing the hearts of viewers and reaffirming its status as a beloved Western drama. Years after the iconic series concluded, the cast reunited for a series of made-for-television films, adding a new chapter to the show's legacy. These five films returned to Dodge 1987, The Last Apache 1990, To The Last Man 1992, The Long Ride 1993, and One Man's Justice 1994 brought the beloved characters back to the screen. James Arnes reprised his role as Marshal Matt Dillon in all five movies, providing fans with a nostalgic trip down memory lane. Despite the anticipation surrounding these reunions, the films did not achieve the same level of success as the original series, while they may not have reached the heights of Gunsmoke as television dominance, the movies offered fans an opportunity to revisit the characters and settings they had grown to love over the show's extensive run. Gunsmoke not only became a household name, but also contributed a lasting catchphrase to popular culture. The iconic line, get the hell out of Dodge, became synonymous with bidding a hasty departure, owing its popularity to the show's setting in Dodge City, Kansas. Throughout the series, this memorable phrase was frequently used to admonish villains, adding a touch of frontier flair to the language. During the 1960s and 1970s, the phrase gained significant traction, especially among teenagers, as a trendy way to express the idea of leaving a place swiftly. While its usage might not be as pervasive today, the catchphrase remains ingrained in the collective cultural memory. In the realm of love, Marshal Matt Dillon, portrayed by James Arnes, 
maintained a stoic demeanor throughout Gunsmoke as extensive 20-year journey, which included 635 episodes. Surprisingly, Dylan's romantic escapades were sparing, with the character's first intimate kiss occurring in the 19th season's third episode, aptly titled Matt's Love Story. This momentous occasion featured a touching scene with Michael Learned, who portrayed Mike Yardner. Mike Yardner made a lasting impression, appearing again in the same season and making a return 17 years later in Gunsmoke, the last Apache TV movie in 1990. The character's reappearance showcased the enduring connections woven into the fabric of Gunsmoke as narrative, highlighting the show's ability to cultivate lasting relationships and memorable storylines that resonated with audiences long after the series ended. Michael Learned, known for her remarkable performance as Olivia Walton on The Waltons, received significant acclaim for her work, including an Emmy in 1973. Standing beside her co-star Richard Thomas during the award ceremony, Learned Joy reflected her deep connection to the role and the series, which became a defining part of her career. Diving into the origins of Gunsmoke as characters reveals a fascinating aspect of Dennis Weaver's portrayal of Chester. In a DVD commentary, Weaver shared that due to Gunsmoke's commitment to a non-violent theme, he was advised not to carry a weapon. To set Chester apart from other characters, Weaver ingeniously decided to incorporate a limp into his portrayal. This creative choice not, however, Weaver later reflected on the challenges that came with this decision. What initially seemed like a unique and defining characteristic turned out to be more physically demanding than he had anticipated. Over the course of 290 episodes, maintaining the limp took a toll on Weaver, impacting his overall experience on set in ways he hadn't foreseen. Only made Chester distinctive but also became a memorable trait in television history. Ken Curtis, who played Festus, made remarkable contributions to Gunsmoke during his impressive run of 307 episodes, solidifying his status as an integral part of the series from 1959 to 1975. Curtis showcased his versatility by immersing himself in diverse roles, including playing an Indian in one of the original 30-minute episodes. In addition to Festus, he portrayed a Texas cattleman who formed a friendship with Chester, only to meet a tragic fate later in the series. This multifaceted approach speaks volumes about Curtis's dedication to his craft and his commitment to delivering captivating performances that enriched the Gunsmoke narrative. James Arnes, celebrated for his iconic portrayal of Matt Dillon, exemplified heroism not only on screen but also in real life. Serving with distinction during World War II, Arnes displayed remarkable courage and resilience. Unfortunately, his military service was cut short by a debilitating leg injury sustained in combat, which likely contributed to the arthritis he battled later in life. Despite the premature end to his military career, Arnes's service did not go unnoticed. He earned several prestigious accolades, including the Bronze Star Medal, the European African Middle Eastern Campaign Medal, with three bronze campaign stars, the Combat Infantryman Badge, the Purple Heart, and World War II Victory Medals. These decorations are a testament to his bravery under fire and unwavering commitment to his country, highlighting the depth of character that Arnis brought both to his role as Matt Dillon and to his service in the military. And that's a wrap for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up, it really helps us out. To stay updated and be among the first to watch our future videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.